the next thing that you probably noticed about looking at this board is that there is no auxiliary section, mm. right? We've got faders, we've got EQ, mm. compressor gate, all fine, but no auxiliary section, yeah. all right? So the way to get your head around this is that the faders on this mixer are not just faders, they act as sends to any output of the console, all right? The mixer operates in two fundamental modes. The first is what is called mix mode, all right? Mix mode is what you're used to, meaning that these faders control sends to the front of house, okay? The second one is called bus mode, all right? Now, I know that sounds like a rock group, all right? Mm. But bus mode, the faders control sends to something other than the main mix. Now, the way that you know you are in bus mode is that the tracks of the faders light up. Now, if I press this, you will immediately see that all the fader tracks are lit yellow, right? So this is a warning to tell you, aha, you are not sending to the main left, right any longer. You're sending somewhere else. If I go back to mix mode, you'll see that the other difference is that these, which we haven't yet talked about, are lit. In bus mode, they are not lit, okay? So the way that you get your head around this is you just remember bus one is the same as the old aux one. So if you want to send to aux one, right, which we both know are the singers at the front, okay? You press this, now you're sending to the singers. So say the singer wants more acoustic guitar, you just bring this up, right? Less acoustic guitar, more electric guitar, so on and so on. That's very good. Yeah. Um, just a simple question. Mm -hmm. Are the, um, the monitor speaker yes. um, sockets at the front, are they labelled corresponding with these? Yes, they're labelled. Oh. So they're labelled AUX1. We've now got six okay. AUXs. Yeah, and we, we only use uh, four, the first four. So in St. George's, one is the singers at the front, two is typically bass guitar, yep. three is keyboards, and four is drums. You can see that they're actually labeled there to keep things as clear as possible, you know? Yep. Yeah, that's right. So say you're in a situation where, you know, pianist wants more acoustic guitar, would you know what to do? So we've got acoustic guitar here. Right. right, so what I will do, I will activate the bus for the piano. Sorry, who wanted more acoustic? The, the singer. The pianist. The pianist. Right. The pianist. Exactly. So we go, we press That's that. That's right. And yeah. we then we adjust, we give her, well, at the moment, she doesn't want any acoustic That's guitar. That's right. The, yeah. the acoustic guitar must be me then. Exactly. <laughs> well, <laughs> there we are. There so she now has a bit more. That's right. Very good. Yeah, and okay. the wonderful thing about this system is that it allows you to immediately see what is active what is going what. Now there is one other thing which is very easy to forget and that is the on-off switches are also active in bus mode. So right now, are any of the channels on? Can you see? No, they're, right, they're, exactly. they're all, they're, they're all <laughs> off, right? But if you see here, you can see that some yes. of them are on. Now, so let me just yeah. So the sing. Let me just uh, check. I've remembered. Yes, yeah, no problem. The singers at the front, correct, have no acoustic guitar. That's right. At the moment, correct. And why is that, Paul? Well, because the singer's playing the acoustic guitar. Right. Yeah. Now, if I now give the singer the acoustic guitar right. because he wants to hear himself. That's right. Yes. Then. That's correct. He now has some That's acoustic right. guitar. Yeah, but you must remember not only to switch it on here, it must also be on in bus mode. So if you, the way to, if you press this, you'll go back into mix mode. Okay, well he's yeah. in bus mode now, right. so he can now hear himself. That's right. Yeah, but you've got to make sure that it's also on here. The on-off switch in mix mode overrides the switches in bus mode. So if I were to switch this off, 
it's gone off in the bus mode in all the buses that's right so even if it's on here but it's on here that's right but actually it's he's not hearing it that's right because it's off that's right and this catches me all the time yes. yeah and the reason for that is simply because they want to give you as much control as possible yeah i get that mm -hmm. um until I come to do it for the first oh, time. Oh, most definitely, and yes. And then it'll be like, you know. It'll catch me out. Absolutely, yes. And just so that we don't leave uh, this out, the other thing that now has changed is that here you'll remember that in the old mixer we had uh, group faders and then we had master faders, right? Yes. We've now got only two faders here. We have a left and a right. Oh, just which on is, the one. Correct. Right. And we have a mono fader. This is the send to the vestry. Yeah. Yes. So. These also have on switches. So you the, the default is on for these, but mm. sometimes you'll find that some smart Alex switches them off and you'll be madly mixing away here and no sound because these are off. Now can I just mention one last thing? Because that's quite a lot of information. Yeah, there are a few more things, but yes. Oh, good. You, All right. You okay, now, I, I talked about these here, mm. right? Now, you'll notice that each channel has its own rotary encoder, yes. right? Now, these, they can show one of three things. They can show gain. Yep. They can show your high-pass filter setting. Yep. or your pan position and that is determined by these three switches over here which one I've selected right so okay. now you can see they are now showing gain. gain so they're that, showing my gain that's right, right. Now. yeah and now they're showing your high pass filter so you'll notice that you know it's because I've set them differently that's so right if I go to the one that I've selected correct just to, so yeah. this one yep should mm -hmm. that they should match exactly right, right. Yeah. okay let me just check my pan yep. here. Right. So obviously pan, you'll notice that now they show a clock position between left and right. Yeah, and I want to go back to my gain. gain. Yep, that's right. Which is what I've got. Exactly, yeah. okay. that's right. Yeah, and you know, this is just a quick way to adjust gain because they find that these are the three controls that engineers need access to immediately. All the time. That's right, yep. yeah. Okay. So over to you now. What questions do you have? Um, that okay. That was great, and I've got my I've got my inputs coming in. Right. I can adjust each one mm -hmm. fully. Yep. I've got to know to get out to the front of house. Right. So get out of the front of house. I've got to have this on, and this is my left and right control. That's right. To yes. Get out to the vestry. I need this on, and this will control my vest. That's right. Yeah, now that's yeah. And you you also have to remember that when you are in bus mode, all right? Yep. This you'll notice this is now lit, mm. all right? Yep. And basically this is no longer your vestry. It is the master for that bus. But again, we usually leave this yeah. yeah, I think we probably won't need to adjust it too much in our environment. Yeah, we just leave it. We we'll leave actually it be adjusting it from here. That's right. Yeah, we um, leave it at Unity. Yes. Yeah. Oh, fine. Yeah. Um, now, so we've covered the inputs for the front of house. Mm -hmm. Now I can select really the four or five that we will be using. Actually, the six. We've got six. So yeah. I'll, be, I'll be selecting the six That's right. different Correct. bus yeah. settings and adjusting that for mm -hmm. the musicians for what they That's want. That's right. That's all fine. Mm -hmm. But what I notice is, this is something completely different on the digital, which yep. we don't have on the analog, uh -huh. is this. Ah, okay. There's memory. That's right, exactly. And you've got motorized faders, right? Yes. Yeah, correct. Which, so yeah. it's remembered setting. Is there, for each service, yeah. I'm guessing, yeah. we set which service we're on? Yes, not only is there a one for each service mm. there is actually a stored setting for each engineer so when you've got things the way you like them you can actually create your own preset which you then recall the next time you step up to the board and that will recall everything it will recall all your eq settings compressor gate everything will be recalled so the first thing that you would do is you would press menu right so 
Right now we've learned EQ, which obviously shows the EQ for the selected channel. Mm -hmm. You would press menu. Menu gets you out. This is kind of like your root menu. The sequence of button presses is as follows. What you would do is you press show, all right? And then you press load. When you press load, you may see uh, just this, all right? Now, if you see just this, MMC refers to the mixer's internal memory. Can you see this knob here? Yep, this and knob, scroll. yes, yep. it also goes up and down. It goes to infinity and it goes up and down. So why don't, if you press this in, you'll ah. see that it opens the menu. Yep. Yeah, that's so right. So that if I come in and I go into the show menu and I just see this. That's right, yes. I now need to open the folder. Exactly. Which does that. That's right. Right, yes. so it's basically, I'm going down into different levels yeah. of the folder. So as you can see from here, we have a whole bunch of now, this is a part which is not terribly well organized, but if you take the scroll wheel and you turn it clockwise, you'll find that you can scroll through the various presets. So you can see that, you know, you've got 10 a.m. default, you've got, you've got my name there, Charmaine's name, so on and so on. And if you keep going, you might find one that says 5.30 p.m. default. <laughs> and you? we might not. All right. So if that's the case, you know, you can either load you know, one of the other presets, or you can just work from scratch, depending, and I'll guide you in that. Right, okay. so say you want to load that one, you press OK. That's right, okay, and it says, are you sure you want to end the world? Okay, and then you will notice that not only has that happened, but also all of the faders have gone back to their respective settings. So again, you can see that it recalls not just your save settings, but it also recalls your fader position. And I suspect that this was probably the fader setting at the end of the service. And probably the final thing um, for this lesson mm -hmm. and in preparation for Sunday yes. is that I will need to talk to right. um, the musicians. Right. And there are two ways that I would normally do that. Correct, yes. Is that Scream I would... like an idiot. I would actually, um, I've moved on. Okay. Yes, I All had right. a birthday. Ah, I've moved. okay. I would usually use the microphone. That's right. And I would also like to hear from their microphones on the headphones. Oh, right. Okay. So those are the two things that I would normally do. Okay. All right. So obviously, if you want to speak to the monitors, a normal, what we, what we call a talkback situation. I will use the microphone input channel on the bus That's right. Mode. Yeah, and actually we have a dedicated input to is our talkback on this side. So this is normally plugged in to input two. So this is normally plugged into input two? Yeah. And I right. will have to check that. Yeah. Very Correct. good. Yep. Okay. Does that, do we have to plug that in ourselves or is it normally left there? It's left there with the cable just at Dangling. the side. Yeah. Great, great, mm -hmm. great. So, that, so that's my talkback mic that's input right. two. Very good. I put it on the bus yeah. and then I can speak to them. Lovely. Now, them talking back to me through right. their voice microphones. Yeah. Um, where's my headphone Okay. Socket? The headphone socket is actually, if I just move the camera so the folks in YouTube land can see, the, the headphone socket is actually under the desk on this side here. Got and it's, it's recessed such that when once you plug your headphones in, they're plugged in for good. Yes. You'll never be able to unplug them. <laughs> <laughs> Reference another video of mine. That's useful. <laughs> yes. Um, when we do that, mm -hmm. my um, my headphone, my the channel, the headphone channel yes. is which? Okay, your headphone channel, or rather what you hear in the headphones, is governed by a couple of things. If none of the solo buttons are pressed, you hear a copy of the left-right mix. Yes. If any of the solo buttons are pressed, that's what I hear on that, the headphone. Correct. Now, Lovely. it gets a little bit more interesting. If the bus is selected, you hear the bus. You basically hear everything that's going to the bus. That's fine because yeah. generally, yeah. Um, 
I would use that very occasionally because yeah. I'm more interested in what they think of what's coming out that's of their monitors correct. than what I think is coming out of their monitors. That's right. Um, what I want to hear is their comments so that right. as the church is filling up, yeah. they don't have to shout out over everybody yes. when they want a bit more left, a bit more right, yeah. or, tell, or if they want to tell me what they think of me. Actually, that's quite a lot yes, for it is. one lesson. Absolutely, and you know, I think that, again, the learning comes in the application, doesn't mm -hmm. it? You know, and the yeah. more you do it, assuming you're doing the right thing, you'll become more proficient at this. Mm. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so Paul, you've um, you've now learned um, uh, in uh, about uh, forty-seven and a half minutes. Uh, the basic way in which uh, a digital mixer is operated. So would you like to say a little bit about your experience and, and you know, what in your opinion are the biggest differences that you've discovered? Well, my, first of all, my experience is that I'm a very slow learner. <laughs> now, if we can have a look at the differences, right. I think there are probably three main differences. Okay. The first one would be the flexibility of it. The flexibility of the extra controls that we have over the EQ, the compression and the gate, mm -hmm. which we didn't have beforehand per channel. Correct. We had it in a separate box. So we've dispensed with the compressor, we've dispensed with the gate, we've now got it per channel. Correct. Which is a big difference. Mm. The second huge difference is the amount of control we have over what we call here the bus, but mm. actually it's the auxiliary in, right. in English, yeah. it's the monitors. That's right. So it's what yeah. the band can hear. Mm. The amount of flexibility that we've got to enhance what they can hear is tremendous. Great. And the third big difference is the memory. Mm -hmm. It's digital, you can put in settings, you can remember what you've set from one event to the next. Right. I suppose the fourth one, which I have yet to see because I haven't yet, um, is what you talk about the, the remote iPad controls, right. which would be quite exciting, but that's for another lesson. All right, wonderful. So we'd like to thank Paul Black very much for being with us. It's a pleasure. Yes. Thank you very much. And um, this coming Sunday, Paul will actually be operating the mixer during the service, and uh, obviously he'll be learning all the time. So this is Bruno Luce for GLB Productions. Thanks very much for watching. See you in the next video.